be making a huge mess. Um, he's, he will be covering workflow as a service. OK. Yeah, thank okay. you. Speak. Good. Hello, everyone. Um, thanks for coming. My name is Lin Xian. Um, yes, it's a Chinese name. And I heard many times that people would call me Lin Xian because you know, the pronunciation of the letter X is different between Chinese and English. So for people's convenience, I picked an English name for me. So you can also call me Larry, easy enough, right? And um, I just came to New Zealand uh, half a year ago from China. And uh, it's my first time to live in an English-speaking country. There's a lot of things I need to learn, especially language. And currently, I'm working at uh, Catalyst in Wellington. Um, in our company, we have a lot of talented people specialize in designing, implementing, and uh, supporting enterprise-grade systems using open source technologies. Um, at the same time, I'm also an active contributor in OpenStack, which is um, another open source software for creating private and public cloud. And of course, in Catalyst, we, uh, we are running a public cloud based on OpenStack. And um, in fact, the OpenStack consists of uh, several projects that are available freely under Apache license. And uh, most of them are written primarily in Python language. So today, uh, what I'm going to talk about is uh, one of those projects called Mistral, which is a workflow as a service in OpenStack. And I will have a brief introduction about what's in workflow and uh, what's Mistral and how Mistral can solve real program, uh, pro uh, pro problems in our daily life. And um, I will introduce uh, some interesting but useful features in, workflow, in Mistral. And uh, in the end, I will do a demo to give you a basic impression about how Mistral works. So because Mistral uh, is a workflow as a service, so maybe the first question we need to figure out is what is workflow? Um, basically, no matter you are a developer or operator or you are a marketing or a sales guy, almost every job you do every day can be described as workflow, right? And um, actually, I searched uh, the workflow definition in my English dictionary. Yeah, I use dictionary to learn vocabulary. But I found um, there, the information there is not very helpful. So I ref refer to uh, Wikipedia. I got this. So it says, a workflow consists of uh, an orchestrated and repeatable pattern of business activity enabled by systematic organization of resources into processes that blah, 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 yeah. <laughs> every time, you know, believe it or not, every time I read it, I found it's um, still difficult for me to understand. So let's just think about a real example. So as I mentioned at the beginning, in Catalyst, we are running a public cloud. And um, uh, our cloud uh, contains a range of services. For example, cloud computing service and um, block storage service, object storage service, and so on. And everything in our cloud is metered and um, Run, uh, follows pay-as-you-go model. Um, so we have uh, a billing service uh, you know, to take care of the uh, resource usage and uh, charge our customer so we can get money. So the first thing of our billing service do is uh, to get a resource usage of customer. Because we run the service every month, so there may be uh, tens of thousands samples of the output. So the first thing we do is data transformation, because we need to get rid of uh, the invalid data for some reason. Or we need to convert the measurement unit from byte to gigabyte, and something else. And uh, after that, we need to get product price definition from somewhere in, uh, internally um, for every type of resource. And before we calculate the final cost, we need to apply discount to some of our customers who have uh, vouchers or cloud trials or 
any other different type of uh, credits because in Catholic Cloud we have different uh, discount scheme for different customer. And f after that we can calculate the final cost and apply um, add sales order in our internal ERP system uh, for review. And if everything looks fine, and we will generate the final invoice and uh, send the invoice to our customers. So the whole process here is a typical workflow, right? Our billing service is just uh, do every job step by step. But we have assumption here. We assume the task in each step works fine, right? But in, we all know that in reality, you know, failures can happen here and uh, there, and uh, we need to take care of the everything, you know, to make them work fine. So think about what if the host, our billing service is, is running on just a crash during we adding sales order. So in this case, maybe we need to rerun the whole workflow from scratch, or we can, you know, to store information somewhere to avoid duplicate sales order. And another possibility is, as a developer, maybe I want to debug a particular task without modifying the code. That sounds impossible, right? But later on, we'll show you how ca I can do that with Mistral. So with all those in mind, we can define a workflow. So basically, workflow consists of uh, one or more tasks and uh, connections between them. So in Mistral, we call the connection flow. And in that flow, you can define how to proceed the whole uh, workflow based on some conditions. And the uh, workflow and the task should have state, so you can know what's going on for that workflow. And you can know which task is uh, running and which task just finishes. And also, uh, the purpose we run workflow may be just need to get some result. Right, and each task may also have a result that can be used by subsequent tasks and data. In workflow, maybe the workflow expect some uh, input from our user or from some external systems. And also the task can also have data associated. So when consider implementing a workflow management software, there may be many other factors we need to consider. For example, we need to consider, you know, we want the workflow can be executed in parallel, and we need to, to take care of the failures, we need the recovery, and sometimes some tasks can, uh, can be run for a long time, and um, in this case, we need to support a, a synchronization, right? And other factors such as monitoring and scalability. So um, what if we implement such software in Python? So I can imagine there will be a lot of try, accept, finally blocks in your code. And uh, in order to support a running task parallel, maybe you can use multiprocessing or a threading library, right? And uh, we can also need a database technology for data persistency. And maybe we need another software or program just for monitoring, because you want to know what's going on with that, that workflow and uh, what status are, are the tasks in that. And also, there will be more and more workflow running at the same time. So in this case, maybe they will assume all the uh, resources of the, on the host. So you may consider buying more servers. And uh, if you are doing things like those, uh, I have to say you are lucky because you are here today and uh, you will know Mistral, which will save you a lot of time. And uh, as I said in the beginning, um, Mistral is one of OpenStack official project created in 2013, which means it's stable enough. And it's also implemented in Python, 
It provides a RESTful API and uh, very convenient command line tools. For workflow definition, we use YAML because I think most people are familiar with that. And we also use Yaku. It's uh, a query language. Um, it's typically used for simple conditional evaluation and transformation in mainstream workflows. And uh, because there are many cases, you know, you, you need to decide whether to continue a workflow based on task results, or there are needs, you know, you need to convert the task result to another <coughs> data or a structure. So uh, Yaku is very powerful for that. And in OpenStack community, Yaku becomes more and more popular. And Mistral currently supports more than 3,000 action definitions out of the box. But I have to say, most of the actions are aiming at uh, interacting with OpenStack. But we still have uh, several generic actions you can use. For example, you can use um, our action definition to sending email or SSH to remote host and something like that. If you found uh, Mistral doesn't support the action definition you need, you can even define your own action and uh, just plug it into Mistral so you can use it. Um, so here is a simple example of a workflow definition. So you don't need to understand the exact meaning of it. I just want to show the basic structure of workflow definition. So you can see here, we, uh, in the workflow definition, there are workflow type. And um, you can define input and output. And there are three tasks here. And in each task, just to run some action. And you can also define the task result by publish. And you can also define what to do after a task finishes. And actually, Mistral have a lot of uh, feature to let you, you know, design a powerful workflows. And uh, today, I just want to introduce some of them. So the first is conditional task transition. It's a basic feature that uh, you need when defining workflow definition. So here is another example. Um, in this workflow, we have uh, input. You know, we have a receiver. And uh, we also got three tasks here. And the task one just get uh, print the receiver name. And we use uncomplete here to decide which task needs to be run according to the receiver name. So this example is very similar to the old ways, you know, if you want to call someone. So for example, you have two friends called Tom and Jerry, and uh, there is a telephone operator. You just need to tell the operator and say, hey, I want to call Tom. And the operator will refer you to uh, Tom according to your command. Very easy, right? And fork and join. Sometimes. Um, some task can be run only if all the preceding task finishes and is successful. So this is a more complex example, but this example you, you can use this example, you know, to use Catalyst Cloud. Um, we have three tasks here. The first task is to create a virtual machine in the cloud, and the next is create a volume in our block storage uh, service. The third one is attach the volume to that virtual machine. So apparently, the third one can only can be run if only the uh, VM and uh, the volume are both created successfully. All right? So you can use join all, you know, to wait all the preceding tasks, loops. Sometimes you, you, you want to um, do some iteration of uh, a list. So in this case, you can use with item cloud here. Just like this example, you can define an input, and you expect uh, to get a list of links. And in the task, it just uh, get each link and use HTTP action to get the web content. So if you are a Python developer, it's very similar to the code on the right side. 
you just define a function and uh, use the for loop to do the things you want. Task policies. Um, personally, I think task policy is, um, is the thing to make workflow definition powerful. Um, in MISPRO, uh, we support several task policies like retry, wait before, wait after, and pause before, timeout. So you can guess the meaning of the task policies from their names, right? And for example, you have a, a task that can be run for a long time, and you don't want to wait forever. So in this case, you can just simply use timeout policy and say, hey, I, I can wait you running for, for example, for a maximum of half an hour. If not, just fill the whole workflow. And uh, there's uh, another two policy very similar. One is uh, wait before, and the other is pause before. So the difference is uh, wait before, um, the task with wait before policy, just uh, wait for some seconds you defined. But the whole workflow can also be run after that, 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 that time you defined. But pause before means when, um, when the task is running, maybe it will pause the whole workflow. And the workflow can only be run if you, you know, to rerun the workflow manually. So later on, we'll show you an example to use pause before. And contrigger. Um, actually, contrigger is not uh, for workflow definition. Contrigger is a separate uh, feature in Mistral. Uh, contrigger is the um, object that you can run the workflow on schedule. So you can define which workflow can be run with what input, and you can also define how often the workflow can be run. So if you are familiar with uh, the Chrome tab in Linux, it's very s same thing, you know. It's a cloud alternative to Chrome tab. But the Chrome trigger supports high availability, which means because in, in Mistral deployment, we um, may have more than one Mistral engine processes. And uh, even if there are some processes just die, and the Chrome trigger can pick the, the healthy processes to run the workflow. So it's very helpful. Um, here is an example for creating a Chrome trigger using the command line. So you just need to, to specify the Chrome trigger name and uh, specify the workflow name and give it a pattern and say, I want to run the workflow for every five hour. So if you create the Chrome trigger, you could, say, you, you, you could see there will be a workflow execution for every five hour. Very powerful. So demo time. So on my laptop, I have uh, a fresh deployment of Mistral. Can you see that? OK. Um, after installation, by default, Mistral will create uh, some sample workflow. We can see. So by default, there are two workflows defined. One is delete instance, and the other is create instance. Because you know, as I said, Mistral is just for um, interacting with uh, OpenStack, most of the uh, action definitions. So you can also see the action definition here, a bunch of them. And uh, most of the action definition is for other OpenStack services. But also, we got some standard action. So you can see we support uh, HTTP and JavaScript and uh, some other SSH, something like that. So as an example, I have uh, a workflow defined here. So this is uh, our example. In this workflow, uh, we expect to get some input as my name variable, right? 
and we define the output. And the workflow contains six or six tasks. And the task one just simply print hello world and it goes for, goes to task four. And the task two will wait for ten seconds. After that, it will print hello mistral and uh, go for task three. And task three have a policy defined the pause before. So when the task three is touched, the whole workflow will be paused. And if we manually start that work, uh, execution, the task three will print hello KV Python and then go to task four. And task four have a clause defined here, join all, which means the task four will will be waiting for the task one and the task three, and then we just uh, do iteration from a global environment we, I define here, and just uh, print the names. And according to according to the name here, the task four will decide which task to run according to uh, my name, right? So just for for your convenience, I just uh, draw a simple workflow chart here. So this is a, a description of that workflow definition. We have six tasks here, and the task one simply print something and go to task four, and we have uh, different policies defined in task two, three, four, and um, the task task four will go to task five or task six according to the input name. So the first thing we need to do is register that workflow. So in Mistro, oh sorry, we just uh, create our workflow. So we have a uh, Workflow here. Oh, sorry. Because just now we use uh, we use a global environment here. Remember. So um, before that, I just register a global environment in Mistral, so it can be used in workflow definition. So we can see the environment here. So in the environment definition, I just uh, define a dictionary. The key is names, and the value is all my name, Lin Xian Kong and Larry Kong, right? So it can be used in uh, workflow. So with workflow defined, and what we're gonna do now is uh, to execute that workflow. So we just create an execution based on that workflow. I need to copy and paste for three times. And also because in workflow definition we expect some input, so we're gonna put the input here. So my name, I, I gave my name a, a value, Lin Xian Kong, right? And uh, I should use the global environment I defined before. In this case, it's my env. So we just uh, run that workflow. So as we expect, the whole workflow will pause. So we can see the task of the execution. So you can see there are already two tasks here. And the task one is success, task two is success. And uh, remember task three, just wait wait for, um, oh sorry, task three is paused before. So task three status is idle because it didn't run actually. And task four need to wait for task one and task three, right? So task four's status is waiting. So in this case, I just need to uh, continue the execution.
So the execution, the status of the execution is running. And for a while, we can see uh, the execution status again. It's a success. And because we defined uh, a result of the workflow, so we can check the output execution get output. So you can see the result is found in my name because the input given here is Lin Xiankong. It's my name, right? So the second time, what I'm going to do is uh, I gave it a wrong name. So let's say James. It's not my name, right? So this time, we can also check how the workflow can be run. Now wait for a moment and the, uh, the execution could be paused as we expect. Yeah, it's paused. And we also continue that execution. So this time, the output should be not found by name because I don't know who James Kong is. So we just get the output to check. You see, it's not found my name. And the third time, I still gave it a wrong name and run the workflow. And uh, after the workflow goes to pause the status, we can check. Yeah, it's paused. So this time, I also continue the workflow. But the difference here, this time, is I give another extra parameter. So workflow. So this time, I still rerun, uh, continue the execution and um, to make the, its the status from paused to running. But this time, I just uh, gave an param here. And uh, just this param here is just a temporary environment dictionary. So I just put James Kuhn here, but without modifying the global environment. right? And uh, Oh, sorry, the ID is wrong. Should be this one. OK. And we can check the global environment. It's still Lin Xiankong and Larry Kong. But this time, if we check the output, you see, it found my name. I didn't modify the workflow definition, and, and I didn't modify the global environment. And I can, you know, to make the wrong input and get the right output. So this is, I think, Mistral is very powerful. And another example I want to um, show is how to use cron trigger. And for the cron trigger example, I want to create another workflow. This time, very simple, right? It only contains one task and just print hello world. And we just create a cron trigger uh, using the workflow. Oh, sorry, I should register the workflow first. And then I just create a cron trigger using uh, that workflow. Oh, sorry. The first parameter I should give is the cron trigger name. So 
let's see, a clone. And uh, we use the workflow name, and we give it a, a pattern. And we say, please run the workflow for every one minute. So after that, you will see uh, a new execution for every one minute. So you can check the execution here. So there are still um, executions that is created just now. And the new execution could be created here. You can see this one in the description. It says workflow execution is created by cron trigger, and uh, in another minute there will be another work, uh, execution created. So that's the demo I showed today, and uh, maybe later on we can check the execution list. So actually, there are more useful um, use cases that workflow technology like Mistral can be used. And for example, you can use Mistral for integration or orchestration of system and services. You can also use Mistral to develop your application and uh, for other you know, long running processes and even for deployment. If you find what you are doing now is very similar to the use cases here, maybe you should consider use Mistral. And there are also some useful links. It's our GitHub and uh, developer guide and some simple examples. So let's just check the work execution. You see there are one more because maybe a minute passed, right? Okay, that's all I want to show you today and hope it will helpful. Thank you. So, any questions? Okay. Hello, great talk. Thank you very much. I was wondering, what happens when actually one of the tasks fails? Do you get an extra route? Does it stop? Do yeah. you intervene? What are the possibilities? Yeah, you can define what you want to do if a task fails. Because, except for, uh, besides for the unsuccess clause, we also support on failure, so you can define what to do if the task you want to run is failed. It's you know, up to you. You can fill the whole workflow, or you can do some recovery, you can do some backup, you can define that. All right, then I suppose we'll wrap up. Um, that okay. Our next talk will be starting in about 15 minutes. Okay. Mingxian. Yep, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>